something like it's such a five, four, three. ourselves as the perfect couple because we don't want to get into that bag either, right? Because we're, we're trying to present what it is, you know, a relationship that lots of other people are having, but they're maybe not songwriters and they don't express it that way. And the letters we're getting back are from couples, apart from the kids who just like it as music. So the main excitement is the letters from people who are married with kids, or not necessarily married, but relate, relating together and realizing that we're not selling ourselves as the perfect couple. We have our problems. We've had our problems. No doubt we'll have problems. But, you know, we're trying. We want to stay together. We want to be a family. And on the, that's the kind of level we're relating to. I'm not aiming... I am not aiming at 16-year-olds. If they can dig it, please dig it. But I, I, when I was singing and writing this and working with it, I was visualizing all the people of my age group from the 60s. <laughs> that's true. Being in the 30s and 40s now, just like me, and having wives and children, and having gone through everything together, and singing to them. I hope the young kids like it as well, but I'm really talking to the people that grew up with me. I'm saying, here I am now. How are you? How's your relationship going? Did you get through it all? Wasn't the 70s a drag, you know? <laughs> here we are. Well, let's try and make the 80s good, you know? Because it's still up to us to make what we can of it. It's not out of our control. I still believe in love, peace. I still believe in positive thinking. When I can do it, I'm not always positive. But when I am, I try and project it. Well, overall, we're getting more and more positive, aren't we? Because, because somehow, we survive. That's the thing. You have to give fantastic. thanks to God or whatever <laughs> it is up there. The fact that we all survived. We all survived Vietnam or Watergate or the, the tremendous upheaval of the whole world that's changed. He, he were the, we were the hip ones in the 60s, but the world is not like the 60s. Anymore. The whole map's changed, and we're going into an unknown future, but we're still all here. We're still wild as life, as hope. Football players are doing it, right? Which we were doing then, which is projecting the future in a positive way. And people will say, no, you're naive, you're dumb, you're stupid. We okay, it might have hurt us on a personal level to be called names, but what we were doing, you can call it magic, meditation, projection of goal, which business people do. They have courses on it. The footballers do it. They pray, they meditate before the game. They visualize themselves winning. Billie Jean King visualizes every move of the, on the court. What we were doing, we were early pioneers of that movement, which is to project a future which we can 
have goals which we can reach. Right? People project their own future. So what we wanted to do was say, let's imagine a nice future. She's right. The males like even Aldous Huxley and George Orwell, who pro produced 1984, you look into uh, Orwell's life, it was all torture and this, that and the other, and he was brought up in a certain environment, in a male-dominated society full of Marxist stuff about Spain, and they were all from the third, whatever, whatever that period when they, when they had those dreams of socialism answering everything, right? And their dreams fell to dust after the war, and then they wrote these books projecting this horrific big brother, monsters controlled by robots. And even now, they, I think uh, these people that project the space fantasies are projecting war in space continually with women in miniskirts, available sexual objects, and the men with super macho John Wayne guns on their hips. I'm saying it's time for the people to get hip to that, man, because they're projecting our future. Do we want to our children to be out in space, or grandchildren fighting, maybe not Russians, but Venusians in space? You see, if it works for a football player and a tennis player, it can work for all of us. We have to project a positive future. I, I mean, I think that's what Christ and Mohammed and those people were saying in their way, in their time, for, the, for their society. When I do go through that terrible insecurity of the world is collapsing, going crazy, it doesn't make sense anymore. Wouldn't it be easier if I was just along with these people, this few hundred or few thousand that all think the same way, and it makes life easier like that? People realize that it's not the end of the world. The apocalypse is not going to happen, no matter what some person might threaten us with. Those people have been waving those end of the world. I remember those, the, world, the end of the world is nigh cartoons when I was 12, you know. The, the, my whole generation, our whole generation, was brought up with the H-bomb. I remember Bertrand Russell and all the H-bomb, and the reason that we were rock and rollers, apparently, in the 50s was because the bomb might go off any minute. You know, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't think it's going to happen. In retrospect, if I was trying to say that same thing again, I would say that people have the power. I don't mean power of the gun. They have the power to make and create the society they want. We, we all created this together. It wasn't a few kings or a few generals. We might have invested the power in the Napoleon, or the Germans might have been hypnotized by Hitler. Does that make the Germans different from the rest of the human race? No way. You know it could have happened anywhere. It just happened there at that moment in time. Okay? And also, the world, does, we do breathe in and we breathe out. So you go to the left, you go to the right. It's all, in, a, in the long term, it's meaningless. Even since I was a, a conscious of politics, it was the right in the 50s, the left in the 60s, and sort of nothing in the 70s. And it's going to the right that if everybody's going to panic and just react to an illusionary right wing that's going to kill everybody, well, that's what you're going to get. I believe that it doesn't have to be like that just because the guy has a right wing or a supposedly a, has a different political view than other people. Now, personally, I've never voted in my life. How do you like that? And there's a Beatles book that was handed out in the 1964 tour, a book of photographs. And on the top of it, it, says, it shows this young John Lennon in his usual big mouth way saying, no phony politician's ever going to get through to me. Well, I take the phony politician now because I don't think any, all politicians are phony. I don't think all, I won't categorize even politicians now. now because I've learned a, a lot since I was 23. But I don't think politics is the only answer. I, I think this idea that we elect these leaders and then expect them to do miracles for us. Now, the, Kennedy is a big dream for everybody because he didn't live to fulfill or let us down. And it's not to negate what Kennedy was and what he means to people. But the reality is, had he lived, how do you know how well he would have done at the time, right? Or how the war would have gone and how everything would have gone. So investing leaders with supernatural powers, whether they be pop stars, politicians, or movie stars, or football heroes, it don't work. It just doesn't work. Because we put them up on the pedestal and immediately we want to knock them off. So Regan's going to go in there. All the so-called rightists are all going to be waiting for him to do what they want. And when he doesn't, because it's impossible, because the presidency is such a vast or inspiring position for any man to be in, and it means a lot more than some local right-left group, that he cannot possibly fulfill the dreams of the right wing, the same way as Carter or Kennedy could never fulfill the dreams of the left wing. People are believing in 
projecting their own power, visualizing goals, visualizing positiveness, and and, and doing these things that it's that are changing, changing the world. It, it all takes time. You see, I think that the bit about, you know, in the 60s, we were all full of hope, and then everybody got depressed, and the 70s were terrible. That attitude that everybody has, that the 60s was, was therefore negated for being naive and dumb, and the 70s is really where it's at, which means, you know, putting makeup on and dancing in the disco, which was fine for the 70s. But I don't negate the 60s, I don't negate the 70s. The, the, the seeds that were planted in the 60s, and possibly they were planted generations before, but the seed that whatever happened in the 60s, the, the flowering of that is in the feminist, feminization of society, the meditation, the positive learning that people are doing in all walks of life. That is a direct result of the opening up of the 60s. Now maybe in the 60s we were naive and like children everybody went back to their room and said, well we didn't get a wonderful world of, of just flowers and peace and happy chocolate and, and, and it wasn't just pretty and beautiful all the time. And that's what everybody did. We didn't get everything we wanted just like babies. And everybody went back to their rooms and sulked and we're just going to play rock and roll and not do anything else. We're going to stay in our room and the the world is a nasty, horrible place because it didn't give us everything we cried for, right? Crying for it wasn't enough. The thing the 60s did was show us the possibility and the responsibility that we all had. It wasn't the answer, it just gave us a glimpse of the possibility. And in the 70s, everybody was going, nye, 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 nye. and possibly in the 80s, maybe everybody would say, okay, well, let's, let's project the positive side of life again. You know, it, the world's been going on a long time, right? It's probably going to go on a long time. Oh, I'm 40, I want to talk to the people my age. I'm happy if the young people like it and I'm happy if the old people like it. I'm talking to guys and gals that, that have been through what we went through together. The 60s group that has survived. Survived the war, the drugs, the politics, the, the violence on the street, the whole shebang that we've survived it and we're here and I'm talking to them, and the woman's song is to Yoko, but it's to all women. And because my role in society, or any artist or poet's role, is to try and express what we all feel, not to tell people how to feel, not as a preacher, not as a leader, but as a reflection of us all. And it's like, that's the job of the artist in society, not to... It's, they're not some alienated being living on the outskirts of town. It's fine to live on the outskirts of town, but... I, Artists must reflect what we all are. That's what it's about, artists, or poets, or whatever you want to call it. And that's what I'm trying to express on behalf of all the men to all the women. Through my own feelings about women, when it dawned on me, you know, my God, it is the other half of the sky, as the, the late, great Chairman McDougall said, right? I mean, they are the other half of the sky, and without them there is nothing. And without us, there's nothing. There's only the two together. Creates the children, creates society. So what's all this BS about, you know, women are this and men are that? We're all human, man. We're all human. The beginning of Mother, the Plastic Ono album, you hear this litany, you know, very slow church bell, which is like a death knell, you know, I don't believe in, I don't believe in, and, and the Freudian things about mother and father. And that was a kind of negative positive. I was trying to make a positive out of, ne out of a negative, but it, it was heavy going. And the reason this one goes ping, 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 is to show that I've come through. And whoever's listening must have come through or they wouldn't be here. And that's the, because I always consider my work one piece, whether it be with Beatles, David Bowie, Elton John, Yoko Ono. And I consider that my work won't be finished until I'm dead and buried, and I hope that's a long, long time. So to me, it's one, it's part of one whole piece of work from the time I became public to now. And that's a, the connecting point between that. And the 80s is like we've got a new chance, you know?